Welcome to Lemon Juice for the Soul. This is our regular vitamin for our soul. Today's verse, uh, verses, it's written in the book of Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 and 7. It read, I, the Lord, have called you for a righteous purpose. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and appoint you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring prisoners out of the dungeon, and those sitting in darkness out from the prison house. This morning, let us read a story. This is a story of a woman. It read, the title is The Park Bench. It read, The Park Bench was deserted as I sat down to read beneath the long, straggly branches of an old willow tree, dissolution by life with good reasons to frown, for the world was intent on dragging me down. And if that weren't enough to ruin my day, a young boy out of breath approached me, all tired from play. He stood right before me with his head tilted down and said with great excitement, Look what I found! In his hand was a flower, and what a pitiful sight! With its petals all worn, not enough rain or too little light, wanting him to take his dead flower and go off to play, I fake a small smile and then shifted away. But instead of retreating, he sat next to my side and placed the flower to his nose and declared with overacted surprise, It sure smells pretty and it's beautiful too. That's why I pick it. Here, it's for you. The weed before me was dying or dead, not vibrant of colors, orange, yellow, or red. But I knew I must take it or he might never live. So I reached for the flower and replied, just what I need. But instead of him placing the flower in my hand, he held it mid-air without reason or plan. I was then, or it was then, that I noticed for the very first time that with Tutting Boy could not see. He was blind. I heard my voice quiver. Tears shone like the sun as I thanked him for picking the very best one. You're welcome, he smiled, and then ran off to play, unaware of the impact he'd had on my day. I sat there and wondered how he managed to see a self-pitying woman beneath an old willow tree. How did he know? of my self-indulgent plight. Perhaps from his heart, he'd been blessed with true sight. Through the eyes of a blind, at last I could see the problem was not with the world. The problem was me. And for all of those times, I myself had been blind. I vowed to see the beauty in life and appreciate every second that's mine. And then I held that wilted flower up to my nose and breathed in the fragrance of a beautiful rose. And smiled as I watched that young boy, another weed in his hands, about to change the life of an unsuspecting old man. This is actually a moving story. In the book of Psalms, chapter 146, verse 8, it read, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts those who are weighted down. 
the Lord loves the righteous. And that is true. Because that is what God does. Going back to our verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 6 and 7. Let me read it again. I, the Lord, have called you for a righteous purpose, and I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and appoint you to be a covenant for the people, and a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring prisoners out of the dungeon, and those sitting in darkness out from the prison house. This is actually um, written by Isaiah to the people of the Lord. He wrote to the people of the Lord that they were called for a righteous purpose. Not just called for a purpose, but called for a righteous purpose. They used to be blind, but because they can now see, now they will be an agent to lead other people out of darkness. They used to be in prison, but God has freed them. God has set them free, and now they will be an agent to set other prisoners free also. So it's the same thing with us. God has saved you. God has saved me. And because of that, God has called you. God has called us with a righteous purpose. Because we had experienced pain. We had experienced sorrow. We had experienced uh, problems, challenges, uh, sickness. We have uh, experienced so many bad things. And yet, because of God's grace, God has healed us. God has freed us from those sins. God has forgiven us from those sins. And God has opened our eyes. Now that we can, we can see, now that we are healed, now that we are forgiven, now that we have been set free, God has called us with a righteous purpose so that God may use us to be an agent of change into the lives of other people, to set other people free, to lead other people to the light out of the darkness into the presence of His Son, Jesus Christ. God has saved you with a purpose. We used to be blind, but now we can see. Let us lead other people to see that wonderful light in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, truly, we thank you so much. Heavenly Father, most of us, we have experienced. How is it to be under the control of sin? How is it to be under the control of hatred? To be guilty? To live a life without purpose? To live a life without meaning? But when you came into our lives, you changed us. You put meaning into our lives. You set us free from our sins. You open our eyes. Heavenly Father, now that we have been called to be your people, your children, now you have called us a righteous calling to set other people free. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. And our prayer is that continue to help us through your Holy Spirit in order for us to see all those opportunities before us that we may serve as light to your people that we may also be able to lead them from the darkness into your Son, to lead them out of the prison in, in finding freedom in you. This is our prayer in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Good morning! Oh. Oh, 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 oh,